The Remains of the Day is a 1989 novel by the Nobel Prize-winning British author Kazuo Ishiguro. The work received the Booker Prize for Fiction in 1989. A film adaptation of the novel was made in 1993. The novel describes a man's journey into the past during a motoring trip in the English countryside, in the form of a diary by an English butler named Stevens. The story begins in July of 1956 at Darlington Hall, where Stevens has been employed for 34 years. The hall is now owned by Mr. Faraday, an open American businessman, who bought it after the death of the previous owner, Lord Darlington. Stevens is super conscious about his own behavior, being a butler, and he has problems finding a connection to his new employer. Though he has a liking for him, he's not used to his relaxed and more familiar manner. He struggles with his tendency to tell jokes, which Stephen sees more like taunting. He feels obliged to humor him and join, but years of restraint make it difficult for him to do so. He still makes an effort to improve in this over time. One day his employer offers Stevens a driving holiday, letting him borrow the use of his car. Stevens takes him up on the offer, as he's received a letter from the hall's former housekeeper, Miss Kenton, who left 20 years ago to marry. Her letter is filled with nostalgic feelings and this makes Stevens think she wants to return to Darlington Hall and he thinks the trip is a good way to find out. Right now, only four people work in the house and some minor mistakes have been happening. She would be a welcome addition with her tireless work ethic and total dedication. But he's also very keen to read between the lines that her marriage is falling apart. Together with his road atlas called The Wonder of England, he leaves on his trip. Over the next six days, he writes his thoughts in his diary, mixed with experiences he has had at Darlington Hall when it was a stage for world affairs in the 20s and 30s, as he served Lord Darlington there. When he recalls the events between the two world wars he repeatedly reassures himself that by serving this noble gentleman, he was in fact serving mankind as a whole. The more stories Stevens shares, the more we get a sense of his relationship with Lord Darlington and his evolution in political affairs. Scenes are painted of elaborate dinners, secret, off-the-record meetings by powerful and influential people, and political intrigue. It's also apparent that he sympathized with the Nazis and was one of the tools Hitler used to influence the English government. But Stevens estimates that Lord Darlington wasn't a bad man at all, although the trust between them broke down, which leaves Stevens with a sense that his life has been wasted. He also thinks of his father, William, who works at Darlington Hall, even at his old age of over 70. He was once a head butler, but now can only manage to perform the duties of an under-butler at the hall. Stevens has a great respect for his father, and feels he was once a great butler, but the men rarely speak and don't share emotions, only when his father lies dying, but even then in the most reserved fashion. Stevens is sure to protect his father's dignity when his workload proves too much and he could suffer a fall in humility. He also denies that his father is slowly losing the ability to serve, and when he lays dying, Stevens isn't there, preferring to perform his work, believing it's what his father would have wanted. Stevens most closely guarded, and most intimate relationship is with Miss Kenton, who came to Darlington Hall in 1922. His feelings for her deepened over the 14 years they worked and lived together, although he only alludes to this. He can bring to life entire conversations between them in his mind as well as recall moments where he struggled to reach out, being held back by his professional reserve. He tried to stay professional, whilst she tried to break the walls around him. He pushed her away more forceful over time, the more his hidden feelings grew for her. When she finally left to marry another man, he was overwhelmed by hidden regret. Stephen's journey takes him to Miss Kenton, now married as Mrs. Ben, where he learns that, 
Although she wondered about what could have been with Stevens, she has since grown to love her husband and their daughter is pregnant. She's moved on and won't be returning to Darlington Hall, which devastates Stephen, sharing that this broke his heart. He doesn't share his feeling with her, just confirming that it's too late to turn back the clock. They say goodbye and he returns to Darlington Hall. As he does, he decides to stop living in the past, to enjoy the rest of his days, and to get better at bantering. The art of bantering may not be so bad after all, since it has an intimate and compassionate quality that he misses in life. If you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe.